So I was recently asked to make a video answering this specific question. Does the Bible say exactly when the rapture will take place? Spoiler alert. Yes, the Bible does say exactly when the rapture will take place down to the very day. And I'm going to tell you about it today on That You May Know Him. Now look guys, there is so much confusion out there about the rapture and when it takes place specifically in regard to the tribulation. Does it take place before, during, or after the great tribulation? Of course, when it comes to the specific hour and the specific day on the calendar, the Bible tells us that nobody knows except the Father himself. We can't circle a day on the calendar and say this is the day that the rapture will take place. But we do know one thing, that the day it does take place has a very specific name in the New Testament. It's called the day of the Lord. That is the day that the rapture will take place. Now look, this entire pre-trib and mid-trib scheme is built on this idea that the rapture and the second coming of Jesus are two completely separate and distinct events. That they happen at two different times, separated by a number of years. Well, clearly, if that were true, it would be spelled out to us in Scripture, and it would be easy to understand and easy to see. We could just read it, and it would be there. But guys, that's not the case. In fact, the opposite is true. Scripture tells us very, very clearly that the second coming and the rapture are part of the same event, and they happen on the same day, on the day of the Lord. So look, in order to get started with explaining this as simply as possible, and it's not going to be hard to understand, it's right in the Bible, we're going to go to the one place that everybody agrees, pre, mid, and post-tribulation people all agree that 1 Thessalonians 4 describes very, very specifically the rapture itself. So let's go there right now. All right, guys, 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 14 to 18 specifically describe the rapture, or the catching up of the saints to meet the Lord in the air as he is coming back to earth. Let's read it together. 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 14 to 18 go like this. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first." Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. There's two things about this passage I want to point out to you. The first is that in verse 15, it says when this rapture is going to happen, at the coming of the Lord. When the Lord comes back to earth. This is the Greek word parousia. And it's used all through the New Testament to refer to the second coming of the Lord. Again, the only reason people distinguish between the rapture and the second coming is because they've been taught to do so. When the Bible clearly talks about them as happening on the same day as part of the same event. We'll see this even more clearly in a minute. The second thing I want to point out from this passage of Scripture is that when it says we're going to meet the Lord in the air, and I mentioned this in another video I did just recently, that's the Greek word apontesis. And every time it's used in the New Testament, every single time outside of this passage, it's used to refer to people who are going out to meet a guest who is arriving 
and then returning and accompanying that person back to their final destination. It describes people going out to meet a guest who's coming and then coming back with him. That is how the word is always used in the New Testament. So on the day of the Lord, when he comes, we will be caught up to meet him in the air and then we will come back with him. Now, let's look at another place in scripture that clearly says that the rapture and the second coming happen at the same time on the day of the Lord. It's in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. All right, guys, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 spells out very specifically that the rapture and the second coming happen on the same day. How do we know this? Let's read 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 5 through 10. Paul's writing to a first century church that was enduring a lot of suffering and tribulation for the Lord. And Paul was encouraging them to stay faithful, to press on, to hold fast to your faith in Jesus because the relief is going to come. And this is what he says, starting in verse 5. This is evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be considered worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you are also suffering. Man, there's a verse you don't hear preached on very often these days. Since indeed God considers it just to repay with affliction those who afflict you and to grant relief to you who are afflicted as well as to us. We're still in verse 7. So look, hold on. Paul says he's going to grant relief to the saints, to the church, and he's going to bring punishment, bring affliction on those who are afflicting God's people. When are both of these things going to happen? Verse 7, when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, inflicting vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. Guys, this has to be talking about the rapture slash the second coming, and they both happen on the same day. There's not two different days. He says that the relief for the church and the punishment for evildoers are both going to happen on the same day when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven. That's the day that both are going to happen. It's called the day of the Lord. And just so we don't have any doubters or anybody, you know, like muffling under their breath, let's just finish reading this passage. It says in verse 9, they will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction when he comes on that day day to be glorified in his saints and to be marveled at among all those who have believed because our testimony to you was believed. Guys, there's no way that this relief that Second Thessalonians 1 talks about for the church, literally writing to first century Christians, could be talking about tribulation saints. Some people say, well, no, this is talking about tribulation saints. Those are the saints that get saved after the tribulation, after the church is raptured. Guys, the problem with that is he's writing to the church. He's writing to saints who are alive on planet Earth before the rapture. Therefore, he's saying your relief is coming when? On the day the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven. It's really not hard to understand if you just take the Bible at face value. Two things are going to happen when the Lord returns. The church is going to be relieved and evil is going to be punished. And both of those are going to happen on the day that Jesus is revealed from heaven. All right, guys, let's look at another passage that also clearly outlines that the rapture and the second coming will happen on the same day, the day of the Lord. It happens to be in the same exact letter. It's just one chapter over. It's 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And starting in verse 1, it goes like this. Paul writing to the Thessalonians. Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together with him. Do I need to explain that? Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together with him. Two events. The Lord comes and we're gathered together with him. Let's go on. We ask you, brothers, not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed, either by a spirit 
or spoken word or a letter seeming to be from us to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. So both the coming of the Lord and our gathering together with him, both of those things happen when? On the day of the Lord. I think that's what I've been saying this whole video. Let's move on. Verse 3. Let no one deceive you in any way. For that day will not come. That day will not come. Two events. One day. Coming of the Lord. Our gathering together. Both happen on what day? One day. Monday. One day. The day of the Lord. That day will not come. Verse 3, unless the rebellion comes first. And look, I could get into what else it says in 2 Thessalonians 2. It talks about the revealing of the Antichrist. This has to happen before the Lord comes and we're gathered together with him. But I think for the sake of this, I've made the point, right? It says crystal clearly. I mean, it's as plain as day that we will be gathered to the Lord and he will come on the same day. It's the day of the Lord. All right, guys, it's pretty clear from Scripture that the rapture and the second coming both happen on the same day. It's called the day of the Lord. And more specifically, to answer the question that was posed in this video, does the Bible say exactly when the rapture will take place? Yes, it does. The rapture will take place on the day of the Lord, on the day that the Lord returns. That's the day that the church will be relieved forevermore, that punishment will be brought on evildoers, the saints will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air, and then we will return with him as he ascends and touches down on planet Earth. There's a very specific location where he's going to touch down, by the way, to reign for a thousand years. The king of the world will reign for a thousand years starting on that very day. But I think it's pretty clear from Scripture that these aren't two different events, that the rapture and the second coming happen on the same day, and it's the day of the Lord. So does the Bible say when the rapture will happen? Yes, it happens on the day of the Lord. If you like this video, please go ahead and hit that like button on your way out the door. Also, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Your support means a ton to us. Also, guys, the That You May Know Him podcast drops new episodes Every single week, you can catch us on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, or wherever you listen to podcasts. To find out more about our ministry or to support our ministry, you can go to thatyoumayknowhim.com. Thanks so much for watching. I look forward to reading your comments. But for now, I'm all done. I'm Blake Barbera signing off. Stay blessed, live loved, and I will talk to you next time. On that, you may know him.